Hello, and welcome to this week's Glass Tire Top 5. It is the week of January 6th, 2022. We are back on video this week because this week is our spring preview. So we have the editorial staff on hand. I am Brandon Zeck. I'm William Saradat. I'm Jessica Fuentes. And we're going to count down uh, the shows that we're excited about. Friendly reminder that a lot of times these spring previews are institution or museum shows or nonprofits because a lot of times galleries don't have their calendars up that far in advance. Also, a lot of the times, you know, since this list is, you know, it's not 20 shows long, uh, we're picking the things that we are kind of the most jazzed about. And a lot of these are shows that have been in the process for ages. One of our picks this week is the Merritt Oppenheim show uh, that's opening this March at the Menil Collection in Houston. Uh, it's going to be on view through mid-September, so you're going to have the entire summer to really get out there and see it. I'm really excited for this show because it is Merritt Oppenheim's first kind of major retrospective in the U.S. in the last like 25 plus years. It's co-organized by the Menil and the Museum of Modern Art, and the Kunstmuseum Bern. Merit Oppenheim, you know her work. You may not realize you know her work. The piece she's the most famous for, which I don't know if it's going to be in the show or not, but is the teacup where the saucer and the cup are both covered in fur. You know, she's one of those female surrealists that didn't really like kind of got her due and people know her name and she is in the art history books but at the same time there's so much more to her body of work this is going to be drawings this is going to be paintings these are going to be sculptural works and it's going to follow her movements in the surrealist group but also just kind of follow you know throughout her entire life this is going to be a big show and i am jazzed about it our other Houston pick uh, for this spring is a show that's opening at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, uh, also in kind of mid to late March. It's a show of works by Shazia Sikander. She is a Pakistani-American artist. She was a resident at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston core program back in like the late 90s. Um, this is a show of her uh, of work from the first 15 years of her career. So she was born in, I think, the late 60s. It's going to be a lot of smaller scale works. I was looking, there's a video, uh, this show's traveled quite a bit. It was organized by the RISD Museum. It traveled to the Morgan Library in New York. You know, I was looking at some videos of walkthroughs of the shows and things like this, and it's it's wonderful. It's going to be paintings, drawings, video animations. Her work is basically reinterpreting and kind of re uh, bring, making contemporary illuminated manuscript painting from South and Central Asia. So a lot of smaller scale, really detailed pieces. Her technique is flawless and her subjects are interesting. And, you know, I like it whenever people take old stuff and make it contemporary. And uh, I also, I'm a sucker for small scale work. So that this exhibition kind of hits all of those notes. And I think it's going to be a good one. Our Austin pick for the spring preview this year is Bill Morris and Cycles and Loops on view at the UT Visual Arts Center in Austin. This show is a series of Bill Morrison's looped video works. Here he's integrating a vast library of rare archival footage with 35 millimeter nitrate footage, which is slowly disintegrating in various states of decomposition. The exhibition is a series of these loops and includes a lot of extra programming, by the way, of film screenings organized by the Austin Film Society. The show itself is organized by Donato Loya, the 2020 through 2021 Curatorial Fellow with the Visual Arts Center. I myself was curious about how Morrison is going to display his newest works uh, featuring disintegration. Personally, I'm a huge fan of William Basinski's Disintegration Loops, and William Basinski has actually collaborated with Bill Morrison. So I think there's a rich conversation to be had around artists thinking about entropy. The work has like a cool, weird, you know, Stan Brackage 35 millimeter, like everyone who worked in that medium, the work kind of all echoes each other just because you can't get away from it whenever you're doing like manipulated 35 millimeter stuff, but it's still all cool. And the clips that I've seen of this work, no exception. The show runs January 28th through March 12th. So you've got just until the winter ends to see this show. Um, and yeah, it'll be up in Austin.
Our San Antonio pick this year for spring preview is Wendy Red Star, A Scratch on the Earth. This is a mid-career survey at the San Antonio Museum of Art. It features 60 works, mostly from the Newark Museum of Art. The show's title is in reference to um, an Absaloka word. Wendy Red Star is a member of the Absaloka tribe, also referenced as the Crow tribe. The show's title speaks to a time in American history when the Crow tribe was being contained to reservation land by U.S. policy. Wendy Red Star's work generally uh, touches in this field, the space where uh, colonial settling and indigenous practices or indigenous culture intersect. At the center of the show, Wendy Red Star will construct a sweat lodge where she will be premiering a new video work. The show is curated by Trisha Laughlin Bloom, the curator of the Newark Museum of Art and guest curator Nadia Rivera Fella. You know, one of the things that's going to be interesting about the show is I feel like it's been a minute. I could be mistaken, but I feel like it's been a minute since I've seen um, a large scale solo show at SAMA. Like there have been a lot of really great group shows in the past few years um, in the museum's rotating exhibition space. But if this show is indeed in the rotating exhibition space, um, it's going to be really interesting to see an artist kind of fully take over that area. Okay, so for our first DFW pick, um, I'm going with the Moderns Women Painting Women exhibition. Um, This doesn't open until May 15th, but it will be on view through September 25th. So you have all summer to see it and into the fall a little bit. Um, And this is a really exciting show because we're going to have 46 female artists all represented, and they're going to be showing portraits of women. So in art history, you know, we're flooded with images of women from the male gaze. And I'm so excited to be able to see so many works of art, over 50 portraits um, spanning such a wide range of time from the 1960s through now with this completely different take. Um, Being able to see how women have painted women, photographed women, all of those things in between. When we're looking at the list of artists, I'm excited to see people like Lorna Simpson, Deborah Roberts, uh, Susan Rothenberg. It's just all over the place. The exhibition is going to be kind of broken down into four main themes. The body, nature personified, color as portrait, and selfhood. You know, having something organized by Andrea Carnes, who's senior curator at The Modern, I know that this is going to be an excellent show that people are looking forward to seeing. Opening at the end of this month, January 29th, and on view through April 23rd, an exhibition of Harry Bertoya's work called Sculpting Mid-Century Modern Life. I'm really excited to see this exhibition, uh, to take a look at Harry Bertoya's sculptures, everything from you know jewelry and furniture to uh, the larger scale freestanding sculptures that maybe he's better known for. And to really see, to take a moment to see the connective tissues between the different types of works that he's made. And alongside this exhibition, as part of their sighting series, the Nasher has invited Olivia Block to create some sound installations. She's recorded Bertoya sounding sculptures and from there's created a new composition. Having an opportunity to see artists in response to other artists is something that's always of interest to me and also finding that meeting ground between visual and performing arts, visual and uh, and sound. I think that will really help visitors take a new look at Bertoya's work. Well, also, I've seen those Harry Bertoya sound pieces at other museums and you know when they're just sitting there unactivated, it's so kind of like they're they're pleasing to look at and at, not to take them down a peg or anything, but they're charming, which is mm-hmm. actually, a, it's a weird word for them, but I think it works. Um, but it's nice to have this component where the Nasher, you know, the Nasher normally thinks about sound work and everything and being as it is a sculpture center, they're kind of taking a wider view. So it's a nice, it's nice, especially with a show like this, that they are taking that view. And, you know, it's almost like when, what was it? I think the Whitney did an Alexander Calder show and they had people like poking calders using like big sticks, <laughs> making the mobiles move. Like, of course, mm-hmm. that's how these things need to be seen. And that's how you need to experience them. I don't know what it is. I think I've seen so many non-functional objects at the Nasher. I'm really curious to see how they contextualize Bertoya's furniture. Um, mm-hmm. I think that'll be exciting to see. 
And we do have one bonus pick for you that's kind of not on the main list, but it's something that we we just couldn't pass it up. So uh, it's also at the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, but this April, opening on April 3rd, closing on May 30th. So it'll be here for two months. Uh, the Museum of Fine Arts Houston is hosting the Obama Portraits Tour, which you know that this is going to be the only thing that's on like any billboards in Houston for the next like six months or, or basically until it's over. Um, but it's, as you know, uh, the Kenton Wiley and the Amy Sherrill portrait of uh, President Obama and Michelle Obama. Um, there was a lot of press around these when they were unveiled. They're very much, they're very much portraits of their sitters and they're, you know, taking away the kind of oil paint portrait tradition that a lot of presidential portraits kind of follow. Um, also, really famous artists who uh, the Obamas chose to do these portraits. The portraits have toured around. Of course, they're normally in Washington, uh, but they've been to the Brooklyn Museum, to LACMA, to the High Museum in Atlanta, and we get to host one of them, uh, one of the stops of this show too. Um, I've been fortunate enough to see these works in Washington and they're, I mean, you know, Kahinta Wiley is just a good painter. Amy Sherald is a good, is a good painter. So besides all of the like fanfare that's going to be around these, if you're actually able to get a ticket and then walk up to and just enjoy these paintings as paintings, I think it will be a really wonderful experience. That is our spring preview list. Obviously there are a lot of wonderful shows that we found that are not included on this list. So we will keep you abreast of all of those as we uh, publish our top fives over this coming spring. And uh, with that, we encourage you to get out and safely go see some art. Mm -hmm.